Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Shot to the Nog, episode 6. I'm here with John. Say hello, John. <laughs> hey, what's up, everyone? All right. So, uh, we missed Monday for reasons that we couldn't control. Uh, you know, we had to fight. We were attacked by ninjas. And they weren't, and they weren't, uh, they weren't John's ninjas. <laughs> but we took care of it, and there are no more ninjas in the world, except for John. So, uh, Today's topic is one that we touched upon in episode one, but we're so rudely interrupted by Paulina. By Paulina, yeah, <laughs> that crazy woman. <laughs> and <laughs> and the the topic was loyalty in in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, loyalty in martial arts, just plain loyalty. And we touched upon it. And I want to explain a few things. This is not attacking anyone. This is just our opinion. Uh, because again, combined, we've got 40 years of experience. Mostly his, not mine. Whoa. Right? <laughs> but in those years, we've, we've kind of seen a lot of different things and, and, and the um, well known politics of jujitsu and, and just, you know, just random things that kind of left us questioning certain things and kind of at one point. I think it, it's it's safe to say a lot of the things that we've we've witnessed and have been a part of soured us, but also shaped us and and put us in 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 where we're at exactly now. So we're trying to kind of shape our team, our jujitsu life, to be very much far from 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 the norm of 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 of, of what jiu-jitsu known as the criantes right and 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 i just want to explain what a criante is yeah so i think people need to know right and meaning. so this was a f uh, a term coined by uh, the grandmaster Carlson gracie way back is the word portuguese it is it's based on a on a character in a soap opera that happened back in his day and this one character whose name is criante he um pretty much he had uh, many allegiances and pretty much showed allegiance to no one, right? But he was like everywhere, and 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 this was this was his term, to and pretty much what he was saying is when you when you're part of a team, and then you leave that team and go to another team, you're a criante. It was very much a derogatory term. Now, I personally I don't think that applies to this era of jujitsu. That era of jujitsu. Now we're talking. What year was Carlson Gracie around? The sixties and seventies. Okay, so that in those days it was pretty much the the old samurai way, right? My clan, which I definitely wanted to touch on. Uh, my clan yeah, versus your clan, right? Yeah, yeah. Our techniques are made to combat. For Your conflict. techniques. Right, for life and death, battlefields. Right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So that was kind of the atmosphere in jiu-jitsu schools back then. Because it had to be. If your technique back then were exposed, and mind you, this was people did this for a living. It was right. like um, trademark secrets. Right, right, right. So if you... you Coke uh, versus Pepsi. Exactly. And it's funny how you, that it goes back even in time. Right. But yeah, if you wanted to, your, your life, your family lineage even defended on it. Uh, right. That's where the terms in jiu-jitsu, classical jiu-jitsu, uh, R-Y-U, which is pronounced do, right. which people call Ryu, but it's actually Ru. Um, Hadouken! Like, can, I wish I had that <laughs> damn sound. I don't have it. I just have to do it manually. And, and okay. <laughs> that's kind of where it comes from, though. Like, um, so I guess there's in being that we are training in jujitsu. Right. I'm guessing that spirit kind of carried over on some level. Right. You know what I mean? But that that's a good. That was amazing that you touched base on it. I was thinking about that. That um, that's where that comes from. There was a lot of hidden scrolls, a lot of hidden. In fact, the movie Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. They talk. Right. It, it touches on that. The same Great thing. movie. If you haven't seen it, watch it. Yeah. A lot of funky kung fu flying through the air, <laughs> standing on branches that should be breaking. Floating through the leaves. Yeah, it's one of those visually stunning movies with, with some interesting yeah. story. But let's get back to what we're talking about. Uh, so in those days, if you were part of one team and then left that team for whatever reason and you went to another team, you would be, uh, I would say, blacklisted. You know, the, you yeah. would you would immediately f have this reputation of there's the criante, he's the traitor, yeah. or or what's a good, what's another word instead of traitor, a, a defector. Uh, you know, somebody. Well, that a traitor is pretty good. Uh, yeah. The thing is also that they have blood offs back then too. Yeah. They had, like, you have to go into school. You have to swear to your god. Yeah, we're talking about samurais now. We're talking yeah, about yeah, the old, not not actually guys. Brazilian jiu-jitsu. <laughs> Nobody had to cut their hand and shake we're anyone's. Jiu-jitsu as a whole. Yeah. And yeah. Its lineage. Yeah. You know, we're uh, talking about where it came from, like. 
like yeah. where where the where the uh, the what's the term bushido right uh, yeah, the I'm the way of the samurai and it's the nearest person that kind of talks about it in the jiu-jitsu family is hickson right you know right, I mean? right 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 yeah uh, the code of the samurai. Yeah. Seven virtues. Right. Exactly. You know the the, the which is one of them is loyalty. Loyalty. Right. And again, these were back in those days, the fifties and sixties, back when schools were very uh, close. And, and and I'm gonna say schools are not close now. Things are more open now. Um, there was no internet <laughs> back in those days. Pretty much how you would communicate with your fellow. A uh, uh, teammate or your professor would be either go to the school or call them on the phone or write them a handwritten letter. That's how you communicated with each other in those days. For those of you born these millennials now with with cell phones and iPhones and emails and all that stuff, you can everything is done from the palm of your hand. You never have to leave, your, you know, the foot of your bed. But in those days, uh, communication was very much uh, analog, very much, very All much scrolls and paper. Right? And, and we're and talking gold. even before that with the samurai. So, yeah. so this this way of the samurai carried over into jujitsu, and it's very spiritual. And, and Carlson Gracie was very, you know, serious about training and the techniques, and and it, it was it was it was fearsome because these schools would compete against each other in tournaments, and it wasn't it wasn't it was very respectful, of course, always, but it was also a form of combat without murder, right? Because in samurai, you know, I I have a sword, you have a sword, let's fight to the death. <laughs> yeah, the the, the the they have a saying also, the the losing technique stayed on the battlefield, and the winning one went in the scrolls. Right, right, because um, that one worked, and yours didn't. Exactly, <laughs> it worked. Yeah. So this carried on to Brazilian jiu-jitsu with with guys instead of having swords, they would fight in vale tudo, which is anything goes, and, and which also goes into the tradition. Right, and that goes back because my it was inside my 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 history uh, as I remember is it also came over with. Count Coma right. was his nickname, Isai Ma uh, uh, Maeda. Yeah, um, he actually was a prize fighter, and right. all of, and all of that, even judo, and going back to, to the Shi'is and back further to the. Because remember, judo is where Brazilian Jiu Jitsu actually came from. Right. Came from yeah. sort of. Before that, they were straight up Jiu Jitsu schools. Right. Uh, they right. weren't called. And I, what there's a, that if I can touch base on this, there was a period as to why Maeda, uh, the the founder, the one who brought Jiu Jitsu to Brazil and to the Gracie family. Right. The, the the theory and and the history has that I've uh, dug up says that he actually didn't want to go and, and modernize the uh, classical jiu jitsu name into the word judo or kano jiu jitsu. They, right. they were going back and forth with that, and I hear or read somewhere uh, a decade ago or two that he decided he wanted to keep the jiu jitsu instead of calling it judo. Right. And I think he was trying to disassociate himself from from the judo kudokan because he was kicked out for prize fighting. Right. There's a lot that goes to it. Right, right, right. But um, there's still that 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 it was just jujitsu became judo because right. judo kan. I don't know if they know. There's a movie called Sanshiro Sugata, which means judo saga, and it kind of depicts that a little bit. And it shows you how all the major schools of Japan competed to who was going to be the main school in Japan right. to teach the police officers, the government. Um, and there's more to it because he established the whole education system with, right. with judo, the judo kind of the founder of judo. He's a very brilliant man. Right. Um, and that was a, a way before Fuzen Ro. That's a whole other uh, uh, that came after the establishment of judo. Mm -hmm. But there was a lot of history, even with Aikido, a lot of stuff that went into it. Um, well, uh, they didn't win 100 percent of the fights, but they won majority. Mm -hmm. and they won like uh, most of them, mm -hmm. uh, and they just and they won the right to be the. Judo, Judo mm -hmm. Kano's school, of his fighters, and grapplers, right. won the right to um, to establish the the, fun, the foundations of the, school, the martial arts in Japan. Right. And it's funny because I think that a lot of that carries even to today. The way they, the, what Judo Kano did with the Jiu Jitsu schools, inviting them and challenging them to see who's going to be the first, he did it more gentleman like. But that style, I can see historically traveled into the Gracie family a little bit. And right. That, Maybe that's a topic for another day. Right. But even when the way they manipulate and control and, and organize the mm -hmm. rules right. uh, 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 when competing. Yeah, but they have their they have their certain set of own rules. Uh, that that's another story how the Gracies yeah. had a list of their own rules when they wanted to fight yeah, whoever yeah. they wanted to fight. <laughs> and uh, another thing, I, th I think I mentioned that Maeda wanted to be a pro wrestler too, right? Did I he actually that? tried it? Yeah, he and tried him, pro wrestling. Him um, and in. Uh, um, Kimura. Kimura yeah. actually was a pro wrestler. Pro wrestling. Too. It's amazing how wrestling always seems to wear its head. <laughs> always. Always. His name is John Cena. Oh, damn. John Cena. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right so, uh, to get back, this is I, these freaking 
long <laughs> as sounds. All right. No. <laughs> so uh, to get back on point to the topic at hand, um, we're talking about uh, loyalty, and I'm and I'm trying to cover back then, so people don't get confused. This isn't a shot at people that leave gyms and go to other gyms. You can't compare the two. Now let's talk about back then. The reason that it was very much a problem for you to jump ship, if you will. That's what you know. That's kind of what I call it now. Jumping ship from one gym to another. The main, the main, the main problem is, let's say at my gym we specialize. In that time, we're talking about when Carlson was teaching. At that time, we talk about uh, my gym is, is specializes in a specific uh, arm bar trap. Right, that sets up and just it's it's an amazing trap and pretty much it was my concoction of of years of years of training and how I I came to it and I just I, I developed this armbar trap right and no one else knows about this armbar trap and here you come right you're my student you come in as a white belt right and and you train with me boom five years six years and then for whatever reason whatever reason you decide to go to another gym because maybe you feel, uh, I don't like it here, there's somebody here that bothers me or whatever the reason, right? You go to that other gym. Now, you take my technique that I perfected and you now have exposed it to a, another gym, right? That was kind of the big issue was taking that specific school's go-to technique. Oh, secret technique. Yeah, and then going to another school and they go, listen, this is what I learned over there and now you've weakened that academy. That was the fear and that was kind of what I believe the reason why they would they would frown upon guys jumping ship, which is understandable back in those days. How many schools were there out there? Not a whole lot, right? In Brazil, just a few, right? So here you got guys that constantly are competing each other and now my go-to finisher... You know it. So as soon as I set it up, you go, oh, no, 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 and now I've lost my opportunity to beat you in combat, right? Which is which is where where the whole you know samurai thing came. Like you said, the the one technique you know leaves goes and scrolls. One technique stays on the battlefield, and that was then. Now let's fast forward seven thousand years to now, <laughs> right? <laughs> Here we are. Things are different, right? We have a the internet, right? And before the internet, we had what books we had magazines we had all kinds of media multiple types of media that showed us all of these techniques that guys were doing everywhere right but we weren't exposed to it because it was the early 90s so whenever we tried to learn things we'd go to videotapes we'd go to books we'd go to magazines whatever technique we could find we'd have to you know break it down on a piece of paper okay and for all the millennials that don't know what videotapes are... Yeah, VHS or Betamax. <laughs> I actually own a Betamax, right? Okay? Uh, so uh, Google that, GTS. Ooh, I stole something from Taz, sorry. <laughs> Anyways, um, so we go, we, go, we go now into this time where we have mobile phones. Mobile phones are the most amazing piece of technology that has made us lazy. <laughs> but it's also made everything convenient, right? So... Now here we are. I can literally go to my phone and pull up any technique through. I'm about all the way to the top, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the macho man, yeah. Now here we go. We have access to everything, right? Granted, there's nothing better than having a live professor in front of you on the mat showing you that technique. Or a sensei. <laughs> right, exactly, right? So here you have that. So with all of this information we can no longer go to those days where i'm afraid that you'll expose you know my one super technique because pretty much everyone knows everybody else's stuff right because guys compete on tv right the world champions the gordon ryans you know the the all the famous fighters they all compete on tv and we all see what they're doing so it's not like behind closed doors, two guys are fighting. Oh, did you hear about Carlson beating up this other guy? Yeah, he used some kind of crazy arm lock. Oh, no, we have to be careful for it. But how do we prepare for it? We don't know what it looks like. Well, now that's not an issue, right? Now, pretty much we can watch everything on the Internet, right? And that's a big deal. Yeah. So the whole thing about you taking one person's technique and bring it to another school is no longer an issue. So now I think let's what's changing, though... If I can add to yeah. it, is that um, it's no more about the strategy now. It's a game of chess. It's, it, it's a sportsman thing. 
In the combat arts, have, uh, the, what we have familiar, what, what's familiar with the similarities between today and, and yesteryear yeah. is that uh, uh, it's strategy. Because techniques are techniques. Yeah, right. you might have one or two here that you might catch somebody they don't know. Right. But I think, I mean, at least today, I, I think what it, what, 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 it's, what it was is that, um, yeah, there aren't so many secret techniques anymore. Yeah. However, I think it evolved to being something more strategic. Right. Now it's a plan you have to build. Yeah. Because as we saw in UFC 1, your yeah. plan didn't matter because your plan was nothing compared to my plan, which was the ground game. Exactly. And you yeah. were a striker. And even if you were a wrestler, you had you had very limited knowledge of submission fighting. And like you saw from the first UFC to like the... 13, yeah. the evolution. Once people saw your technique, you were going to win only but so long because they, once it was the same in feudal Japan. Right. Once another school saw the, your, your uh, method, your style, your technique, they went and you worked on learning it right. and finding cures and yes. answers for it. Yes. An antidote, so to speak. Right. So I think that's what it is and, and, as this evolution uh, took place. And you even see it, like I said, in the first UFC to the 13th or 20th or whatever. Right. You saw it, how big the changes was. And yeah. after a while... Jiu-Jitsu was in, was in complete control from the first, maybe up to even nine, I'll give it. Yeah. Not even that far, but I yeah. think up to nine. Yeah. After that, wrestlers came in. Maybe even before that. Actually, I would say even up to three or four, right. five, maybe six. Uh, hey, then, Dan Severn, catches Ken Wrestler, came in and, and, and gave yeah. gave Hoist a problem. Yeah. But he got submitted, but he still gave Hoist a problem. But it started evolving. Where it got harder and harder for Jiu-Jitsu. Yeah. For even a class, even a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu guy, it got harder and harder for them to start defeating yeah. in time. Of right. course. They had a good run. No, yeah. Jiu-Jitsu had a great run. They I mean, did. look at from then to now. It's like you now, back then it was you had to, Jiu-Jitsu was the best martial arts in the world at yeah. that time. Right. Now, in MMA, mixed martial arts, Jiu-Jitsu is only one piece of it. Right. You know, now you just got to learn Jiu-Jitsu to help your whole Because now everyone knows it. Everyone, knows it. everyone exactly. trains it. Everyone has a, a gym. Everyone's a blue, purple, brown, black. Mm -hmm. Everyone is, there's so many black belts now. Yeah, and there's good ones in not so good. Right. And that's in everything. That's in all martial arts, right? Uh, but so let's now take that word criante and push it out of the equation. Because I believe that when he used that term, it was more for uh, traders that left my gym with my secret technique and now endangered my academy. Because now my the reason people would come to my academy would be because of this technique or this group of techniques, right? Yeah. That, uh, yeah. Um... That's that's okay. Now let's look at it in modern terms, right? For a second, right? Because so we have to communicate for the millennials and keep right. on the millennials and the white belts that are just starting to train now, and the blue belts that are starting to train now, so they can understand. Because now here we've, we again we have multiple years of of, of experience in this, mm. and we can share this information with you. But we have evolved, with yeah. It, and you know? so so we can change the game and make it a little better for everyone around us. But I just want to touch base. Yes, today you don't have to you you, you don't have to be afraid of sharing the techniques because nobody's it's not life and death first of right, all. Right, right. Let's look at it from a modern perspective, a modern point of view. Um, since we don't have to worry about secrets and dying in the battlefield and all these other classical terms and, right. and then there's the the, the great Sierra where they, they no one really knew ground fighting so they had the they monopolized the market up right. to a certain point. Right. Uh, there's three there's I see it already there's three eras of already of of Jiu Jitsu and MMA. Yeah. But the reasoning that I can only give you today is like artistically. Uh mm -hmm. And again, I mentioned in the last podcast, Hicks and Touch Based on it is on YouTube. Right. I like what he said. Today, it's more about now competition from school to school. Like, right. why would I want to train, uh, um, if I may speak uh, as myself, or why would we right. want to train uh, 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 someone who competes in, let's say, because this is the last few years at the IBJJF. Right. Um, why would you want to train one guy to compete and then he goes and joins a competitive school and then perform, I see this even now. I have friends. Uh, I want to give shout outs uh, later on to these friends that have right. the same problem. They're training people, and these guys come from other schools, or they train it with like they'll start at white and go away to like blue, and then go join a top level performance school. Let's say because of that, they have more popularity. That's yeah. one one example. Yeah. Or this person might they'll go to you. a bigger name, perhaps. Yes, and, and that's huge right now. Bigger yeah. brands. Bigger names because that's what it is today. I mean, who doesn't want to be a Marcelo Garcia black belt? Yeah, right? Marcelo, Enzo Gracie, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, uh, you name it, Alliance, uh, yeah. uh, Fabio Unity. Clemente, yeah. you know, everybody. So, so Murillo, what happens right? is that people, people, sorry, people start training in one school and then 
they go to these tournaments, they meet other people. There's many reasons why people leave. Also, it's not always that you're a bad instructor. It's always, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes they might like the group, they might like people, they might have associates and my friends they several never, reasons as to right. why to leave a gym and I want to make that a but point I, yeah. I just want to finish if I don't yeah no go right ahead yeah. my, the point that yeah. I wanted to make is what happens is that when you're invested you know because people don't realize that when you join a school you are investing financially yeah but the teachers also invested in teaching you it's committed. a two-way street it's a two-way exactly street. and if you you take it personal for I'll give you as, I'll use your example mm -hmm. you and I especially right. we are very invested in the martial arts this right. is this isn't just a hobby for us this no is this is lifestyle. this is a passion this is a lifestyle right? yeah, it is 100 percent. and when you like anything else when you do anything that uh personal right you take it that personal you do it that committed it's hard when you invest time. You see them grow. I've, you, I, I have the honor now to see students you've seen grow up from yeah. kids to now. I've got kids that I've been training since they were ten years old. Right, <laughs> and you can. But They're you adults can't. now. They're grown men, grown women. And they're still here. Yeah. But you know the feeling of if they get up and go to another school, it, it's not a good feeling. They it hurt you not. because you've given them part of yourself. Right, right. In your jujitsu, right. you have. You right. can't. You know. And to right. me, that's the value. I'm going to say that the teaching values and the moral values and the right. living values right. of the martial arts in general and why I personally don't feel it's fair to, to have someone give you so much of themselves so much time so much, especially if they're a good instructor this is right. for all instructors right. and then you go without reason up and leave I'm not saying that it's a bad thing I'm not saying I personally I mean you uh, might be different you're a little right. soft on this I'm a little bit traditional on this. yeah you are absolutely you know I don't believe in changing schools yeah. I believe in when you get to a certain point where your teacher thinks you have the foundation in the Japanese traditional arts it's called the Musha Shugio which the teacher actually sends you out to other schools Right. but that's after he feels you're competent enough and he feels he probably can't really keep adding so much more to your skills right. they send you out and then you go and try other schools that right. was a tradition in Japan too right. called the Musha Shugio. Yeah. It's called a warrior quest of warrior pilgrimage, a warrior uh, auspice, right. auspice, you know, where you go out and you test your skills in other schools, Absolutely. you see how you're doing. Um, but the thing is, like, I think that, that personally, I, I mean, that's old school thinking, but personally, I think it's, it's rough. I've had students that up and leave just out of, mostly out of laziness, but some of them also go and try another schools. I can't get upset today, but it depends. It's like you take it, Hickson said it too, you take a student in, they're like your child. Yeah. They're like, they're like your yeah. son, your daughter. Yeah, absolutely. You know, your nephew, niece, and, and, for them to leave, it is a personal blow. It's like uh, you you just broke a relationship. Up. It is you you broke up with me. Exactly, you goddamn bitch. <laughs> exactly. So, so we're relating. You know what I'm saying? We're, we're in a relationship, and yeah. no matter how you put it, you're giving up. You have a relationship. With, we have a relationship with our students. Yeah. Right. Unless you want to. This is why I don't. You know, I'm gonna talk. <laughs> and, Drama. And, they, <laughs> and this is why I don't blame a lot of these these. There's also another reason, other side of, of the effects of it. Yeah. You have these instructors that don't take it personal, don't give a crap. They come in, they just, you become a paycheck. You are a dollar sign. Exactly. You are a dollar sign. And they probably figure this person's going to stay, probably not loyal. That's okay. I'll just get more dollars from exactly. someone Exactly. And they're going to leave and get as much as I could from them. That's what's happening to me personally. One of the side effects, and, and that I, 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 let's connect the two, why I don't blame these people, but I right. also at the same time, you, you people who are, I'm not going to say crayonkas, crayonkas uh, uh, yeah. traders crayonkas. are all. Or, or there's another name for it there, but when you hop from school to who or like a rabbit from hole to hole, <laughs> um, you know, I think that that's the, that's where it become a moral thing. I think right. that, you know, it's a it's a catch-22 because you, you do this, you're going to create this cause, and it's a butterfly effect right. in the martial arts. So right. you're going to say, ah, oh, we want to give you the liberty to go and do that, but then there's those that come and leave and come and go back. We've, I've seen them, I've seen it here, I've seen it at the school, where the teachers are nice and they'll let you come back up to two or three times. We're not going to say yeah, your names unless sure. you want to. But, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, you get my gist. I've yeah. seen it, we've all seen it, yeah. and that's the problem. These people create a bad name for the good ones. It is, it, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and and okay, so so keeping that in mind, and your perspective is a hundred percent accurate to your experience because that's what you've seen, and also I've seen it. I'm not going to disagree with you on several points you've made. So let's now talk about. Um, there are many reasons why people leave. Now you've mentioned a few. You know, maybe it's because they want a be a bigger name, right? Maybe they want to go and train with Henzo. Maybe it's because they feel that it, whatever gym they're at, let's say it's a it's a it's a small gym, right? And they they feel they've peaked, and they need and they want more training. They want maybe a little more aggressive style because maybe they're trying to get into MMA, right? Or maybe they're trying to become serious competitors. Now, 
The pro fight system in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu has exploded. There are many avenues that these pro fighters can take and actually make a living, whether it's through sponsors or just plain prize fighting. These super fights nowadays are becoming a big deal, right? There's great websites out there like Flow Grappling. There's out there, Polaris is a great promotion, the EBI, Eddie Bravo Invitational. All these big promotions now that are kind of growing up you know, uh, opposite the IBJJF, which is kind of still very amateur, they do have some, like Pro World, they do have some prize money, but a lot of these guys that are watching all these big names, like, you know, uh, I'm going to go to Gordon Ryan again, because he's the last name I have in my brain, <laughs> and you know, you've got Danaher's Death Squad, everybody there is a pro fighter, they're going out there, they're making names for themselves, they're making money, Winning medals, right? Yeah. and this opened an avenue for a lot of people that you know, can't pick up a basketball and, and shoot from half court and aren't six foot eight and, you know, and or, or can't throw nine to eight hour mile, in my power fastball. Or they go to college and don't or, have to work a right? full time or, job. Yeah, or maybe they pants. can't go to college and they can't, you know, they can't do. So they have this this avenue, which is still pretty expensive. Jiu-Jitsu is not cheap. Oh, but no, they will put whatever they can into it to get into a good school and maybe make an impression on that instructor and be like, okay, I'm going to mold you into a world champion or even better, a prize fighter. Right. So now that's kind of an, a, a thing where, where you can't blame the student for, for, for starting somewhere small and going somewhere else where they can possibly make a living. Right. Because let's say he stays at the small gym and he's awesome. Right. But that instructor has limited resources and he can't really push him the way he should be pushed. Right. So. Now I'm sti I'm sticking on the reasons why people leave. Now how people leave we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna touch on in a second. So again, maybe that's the reason, or maybe you move from one city to another. That's the reason you leave. That also happens, right? Happens now my professor, Professor Leo, he's been in a few different schools. When he started, he started with Petrochino, and then he had to move from the city he was in, and. He went to another gym, and, and then he moved again, and he went to another gym. And, and there another... are circumstances. Yeah, there are always so. circumstances not in our control that we have to keep in mind. So with all these different circumstances that pushes you away from your gym, whatever it can... So what if, let's say, um, here's an example. Um, you, just, you just don't have money at the time, and you can no longer pay that gym, and you take a break, right? And then you actually make your money back, and now you can join that gym, but... Uh, you've been so far away from that gym, you decide to go to another gym. That happens also. There's a lot of different circumstances that have people change gyms. Right, but I think that's 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 understandable. Right, those are the understandable ones and the, the, the you're not in control of situations. Right, but I think the meaning of Crayonka in this, in, in, uh, in the, as this example as we're talking about is uh, more about guys who hop back and forth school to school constantly. Right, right, right. right. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? Like I mean by hold to hold. There's different when you, if you have a few, you know, life is long. You, you, you did two journey is a long journey. Right. It's rare now Nowadays, especially to stay in one school too long. I mean, except unless you're with, uh, uh, let me name a few, ready. Uh, for example, let's start with. Uh, gr And yeah. then there's Enigma. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like, so no, that, that, those, are, those are some, yeah, that's absolutely, <laughs> so, so, absolutely true. Yeah, no, I so, hear that. So, yeah, that school like, is, you know, well, well, that school is that school. Okay, yeah. no, but I get it. So, so we're talking, I get that, right? So, again, I want to make it clear that there is, a, there is reasons why people leave. Now, I'm going to give an example. Here's an example, not no. naming names. Um, I had a student that straight up told me i want to i want to change things i want to i want to explore other avenues and oh, he and no. <laughs> <laughs> no i'm just kidding no I'm just kidding <laughs> no he's but he did it respectfully right oh, okay. and that's what i want to get to now he did it very respectfully he he sat me down he said listen i want to do this i I'm want to do that way, yeah of course we're joking but we're, we want people to understand this is what this is how things work sometimes. This is this happens and you're gonna encounter this. If you stay long enough in jujitsu, you'll encounter this in one form or another. Right? <laughs> so so yeah, no, he sat me down and said respectfully, uh, you're awesome, but I wanna explore other avenues. And he no, didn't say it that way. He didn't say it that way. He kinda he kinda swerved around it. He yeah. was very, very careful about how he said it, but I understood it. He, he may not have known that I understood what he was saying. Pretty much he was telling me in so many words, uh, I'm leaving. Right, and I said, "No, go ahead, do At what least you need to do." That, though, yeah, yeah, you know? no, but he gave me a, he gave me a <coughs> respectful conversation, and I said, "That's fine." And 
Not usually, enough. usually that is for any instructor is more than enough. Let's now let's go back to Leo, right? When so Leo that's left, consideration. yeah, exactly. It's called respect, right? So Leo, when Leo left Pe his first instructor, Petoshino, he went to another instructor. I don't re remember exactly who it was, but he made sure that he told Petoshino, right, his first instructor, to call the second instructor. Now this is old school, right? Yeah. He told his his first instructor. He said, "Listen, I want to go to this gym. What do you think?" He said, "That's fine. That's cool. Let's we can. Yeah, absolutely." I'll give him a call. And Leo was like, that's great. I'm down with that. And he ended up going to that second gym. And that's kind of how Leo did things. Leo was always about, you know, respecting the previous instructor, like him or not. So that's the old school mentality. You right. Know? And, it goes into... Right. You know, right. Yeah. So that, that's important, right? So it's not so much that you leave your, your school. It's how you leave your school, right? So let, let, let me pose this scenario to you. And I want you to give me feedback on what you think about it. All right. So let's say, John, right? You've got a school. Let's say let's say we're both in Florida, right? Mm. Uh, I'm your buddy, right? I've been, I've been training. You know, we've trained together. We've had... Uh, we've, you know, good rapport and um, you have this really good gym. I have a smaller gym, but, you know, I'm building my gym. You have established students. You have, you know, you've been teaching many years and a pipe bursts in your bathroom, right? Poosh, water everywhere. Metaphorical, really? No, let's not. Why, oh, damn it. <laughs> no, yeah. yeah. <gasps> Oh, thank you. <laughs> no, so um, so you get this, so you get this pipe bursting right in the toilet. That there's shit and water everywhere, right? And it happened at four in the morning, right? So <laughs> four in the morning, and, and you know, oh, pardon me. And now you've got crap and water. <laughs> Now you've got crap and water everywhere. Oh, that sounds fun. And you come in the next morning and you open the door and you see the damage and you're like, oh my God, what happened here? And you immediately have to cancel class. Okay, done. Right. So ah. so now uh -huh. so now you're like, oh Jesus, so you gotta inform all the students, you gotta inform, you know, everybody. And and now you're scrambling. Cause maybe there's there's not enough damage. Maybe the damage is minimal and you can save the dojo. Right? However, uh you 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 check everything and there's no way to save anything. You really have to either either get all new equipment. So there's no way to save anything, right? Yeah, I mean, the the best you can do is 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 close the gym, clean up, and get some new mats. But that's you know, yeah, yeah. You're 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 pretty much screwed. It's 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 crap, <laughs> literally. Right? <laughs> no pun intended. Yeah, no pun absolutely intended. Oh. So now. You you close your gym yeah. and you you contact me and you say listen man I got I got problems I, my gym's closed and you go oh no right and and so you're like listen my my guys need somewhere to train they need somewhere to train can they can they go to you for oh, while I while boy. I fix all this right right right, 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 right. And, and and you're a one man show maybe it's you and another guy just just doing stuff trying to get shit done right and so right. the two of you are scrambling and you're trying to get everything set up ready one week goes by. It's looking so, good. It's looking good. Two weeks go by. The other school now that we're using uh, as a metaphor uh, is they're related, or they're just a friend. Or they're they just friends. Just friends. Yeah, one just friends. yeah, you, 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 and I. You know, we've we've been friends for a while, and like we've had interaction, and yeah, maybe maybe we are affiliated somehow, but you know, you're the guy I can count on. So I, you know, I send my guys to you, and that's cool. <laughs> right. So. A month goes by, and and the students I, are training at the other yeah, school. and 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 I, I managed to put together, you know, something. You know, I, I found a location, and I was able to 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 get in a, to get some mats in there, and I'm ready to open, right? I'm sorry, you're ready to open, right? So now you 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 contact me, and you go, okay, uh, uh, tell the guys to come back. We're ready to do it. And you know the sad part about that. Uh, I'm talking generally speaking, yeah. outside of circles, is that mo a lot of people out there, this is actually an interesting topic, because I've actually also dealt with that, and this is, might be a little bit outside of the Rayonka realm, but there are martial artists who uh, deal with this on a regular. Sadly today, sadly, uh, it's it's non-existent. There is not, there, there, that has expired actually even dedicated, probably a decade or two ago already. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when a student leaves, uh, 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 here's 
I guess let me let me rephrase this. I think that the way the only way that would work today is if you were associated, if there was a, a branch school, yeah, uh, and, and the student usually had to travel a little distant. Like this, we're talking like body sort of fitness mentality where, where you can go uh, gym to gym, right. uh, or or New York Sports Club or whatever uh, Planet Fitness, right. Um, where it's a franchise. Where it's a franchise. I think that that mentality works in a franchise. It, it unfortunately, especially in a capitalistic society that we live in, um, I don't think it works. Uh, I I don't think people understand. So you're saying like we're friends, but we're two different schools. I think that your friend wasn't a friend. Oh no, that no. friend. So let's a talk. Friend. No, let's talk about this then. Let's say because we are. Friends, let's say yeah. we are affiliated. Let's say we are under the same banner. Right. right? right. So now, now that changes the dynamic. It a bit. does big time. Right. Now we're talking. Now okay. we're cooking with gas. Right. Now so, we're so, with so, gas. so let's say we are affiliated. Right. We we are part of the same team. Now, mm -hmm. I you are ready to open your gym, and I've got I've got your guys, and they're they're having a good time. They're training. They're they're doing the regular thing, and you open. They usually will come back. And usually the 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 president, the vice president, director, the dojo owner, because you were on the one affiliated flag, usually would say, for, uh, go back, or guys, the school's uh, open, it was nice to have you. Okay. Celebrated. However, there's also uh, uh, the understanding also before that even happens. Uh, uh, in jiu-jitsu, in the, in the jiu-jitsu world, there is a thing where you're not allowed to, if you're affiliated, it used to be, now there's so many schools, but right. if you're affiliated, you have to have a school at a certain distance apart. Right, I don't right, know right. if people are aware about that. All that is stemming from the Crayonka right, right, uh, mentality right, in Jiu-Jitsu. Right, 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 right. But like, for example, let me give you an example. Let's say uh, we had uh, we have schools, and everybody has schools in Europe, we have schools in Brazil, we have a school here, Yeah, uh, more coming. Um, there was, they were written in the old days, like, uh, I don't want to use any specific names, but they were written uh, in the old days where if you open a school, especially in the Gracie family, you weren't allowed to open a school, uh, like, I'm using a hypothetical number here, but like about 20 minutes or 20 miles distance from mm -hmm. each other. Right. That's usually how, and, and actually some schools still do that. Right. Um, and the reason for that is because they didn't want to hurt each other's school. Right, right, right. Uh, and there's a reason for it. Absolutely. Uh, so that loyalty was in there, you see yeah. it already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what happens is if, if they would send people 20 minutes out of the way for a week or two, three weeks, up to three months, whatever it took for the construction of the building of the school to happen, right. the students would want to come back. Right. So but, that's that's a big deal, right? Yeah. So they're supposed to, right? Yeah. But for whatever reason, let's say your guys, right, they, they're, now, uh, they're now to this regular routine at my gym. And your gym is ready to open, and maybe of the, let's say you gave me 20 guys to train over here. Let's say, let's say five or six came back to you, right? And the rest stayed with me. Now, here's, here's, here's the question I pose to you. These guys, right? The guys that stayed with me, right? Um, they didn't tell you anything. They just kind of stopped. They just didn't show up to you. They didn't contact you. They didn't say anything to you. It was very much a uh, cold turkey cut, you know, just kind of cut the cord and let you fall away. Now, they weren't friends. Okay, so here's Definitely. here's here's my issue with loyalty in jujitsu. There is a way. I I have no problem with people leaving. Right. It's what what my issue is is with pe how people leave. Had these guys came to you and said, "Listen, John." Um, we, we, we ap absolutely appreciate all you've done for us, right? But uh, Eric's prices are a little better. Or not even that. Let's not go with that. Let's go with, you know what? The schedule works for me and my job. So instead of me showing up to your class late every day, I can make his class on time, you know? Or let's say uh, these guys... Maybe what the reason is that they don't like uh, some of the some of the other students, the guys that came back to you. Let's say they don't like those guys, right? Uh, but they came to you and they said, "Listen, it's it's not you, John. It, it's 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 you know it's Bobby and 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 Billy and and, Click. and yeah, those guys. I, I I'm not comfortable training with them, and they're not going to come back to to." To, to Eric's school so I can absolutely have a better time training but they came to you with all their reasons right maybe they just sent you a, a text maybe they was straight up hey uh, thanks but I'm gonna stay with Eric right that is something I believe is 
maybe a easier. It sounds like a courtesy. It, uh, it, yeah, yeah right? uh, courtesy, right? Just uh, just the fact that these guys are telling you they're not coming back is enough, right? And and that's the way that's, I look at that. If I, yeah, if yeah. I can, if I were to give you a, a very generic but honest and and and, and sincere right. answer, is, right? It sounds like you looked at these individuals as a little bit more than students, right? Um, if I, is it safe oh, to say yeah, that? For sure. And what happens today, I think, what I would say today is, um, you know, uh, it's it, it, there's a word. It's they say, that people say it's it's business. Right. You ever heard the expression when one school no, does no, it to the other exactly. school? Like, oh, sorry, no. It's just it's business. Not personal. Nothing it's business. personal. Just right. business, right? And, and there's a that goes with the saying like you can't take. Yeah, there's a there's a point where when you want to do business, you got to separate it from from personal. You, right. you know what I'm saying? Sadly, right. um, it's tough in jujitsu because. You get bonded is like a family element, but yeah. it's a real family. I mean, think about it. It started with a, an actual family. Absolutely, an actual family. Yeah, pretty much what I'm what I'm trying to say about all this is there's a right way to do things and a wrong way to do things. And my opinion is if you're gonna leave a school, and especially in this era, because there are several reasons why people. My my theory on everything nowadays with jujitsu, it definitely has become a business and a service. Yeah, and yeah. I agree with your whole thing about. Putting, you know, we put our lives into this. Yeah, the thing is though that there's a difference between um, f we're touching base on friendship and business. Right. It's it's a really gray area. Right. Uh, I but what happens is we get really close to our favorite students if we're going to use that we phrase do. favorite students right. and uh, we, we got to call it what it is. I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is another area where people might agree and disagree. Right. But oh, shit, they fight. <laughs> <laughs> but I, it's the same thing. Like here we go. I'm going to say this. It's like every parent having a favorite child. Right. Right. Yeah, you, know, you you love them all, right. but there are always going to be a few you're going to kind of lean a favor if you have more than one cow yeah. or cousins or anything, whatever it is. For sure. So the same thing happens in martial arts. You you got your students that pay, you like them. There's people. There are the ones that I call the ones that pay the rent. That you just come in and and you now we get that's a whole that can expand into like the belt ranking and right, watering right. down the systems and all that. Yeah, right. but at the end of the day, there is a point where we, I've learned to decide whether I'm going to have personal students. Or people that just pay the bill. Right. It's a hard balance. I had an instructor tell me, you know, you got to have your fighters separate them from the business. You know what I mean? Because right. it's it's just that's the way the nature of this industry. Right. Not everybody's going to be a champion, and right. and actually you're going to have less champions than uh, you're not going to have a, have enough champions to pay the rent. Right. If that makes sense. And that's your opinion. and that's your experience because you actually own you actually own a gym where you had actual fighters that you went out and put them to fight and mm -hmm. you were actually trying to build an MMA team with actual yeah, and fighters. And I actually did. And yeah. a lot of them don't pay. The fighters, there was no fight for the rich, they say. Yeah, absolutely. And and, absolutely. and, and, and opposite is right. uh, fighters are a product of the environment, right. which means they usually come from poor neighborhoods, broken house homes. Yeah. I mean, the good fighters. Like right. you think You look at, for an example is look at Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson. You know what I mean? One of the greatest. You look at all these, a lot of these fighters that become great champs, you're going to see that they have some kind of uh, uh, background struggle. Yeah. Um, that, you know, so, not all, but you'll see that. So hard, hard times breed way better men sometimes, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we learn from our pains and struggles. It yeah. makes us stronger, yeah. uh, the Spartan mentality. But um, on the same note, though, you, the good ones don't usually have to fight in them, but they know how to behave. They right, know how to right. do everything that is, is proper. And right. it's hard. They, the loyal ones are probably the yeah. ones that are just like... And I think what, what, I, what I'm trying to say is it, it it's it's... It's never going to change, I think. I think people will, will, will pick their teams and either stay or, or go. But the, the ones that go, I think they should keep in mind that the person teaching you jujitsu is is more than just that. Because, believe it or not, I think we, we have several roles. We have, of course, when they come in, we are their instructor, their professor, their coach. But... Sometimes, believe it or not, off the mats, even without them knowing, we become their best friend or their brother or their uncle. In some cases, we become their father. Mm -hmm. In some cases, we become their only the only person they can talk to at times, right? Because mm -hmm. we, 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 have, we have fresh eyes and fresh ears, right? So I think that is important to understand. You know, I think you just touched on a really good point. Here's what, what, what if I had to give an answer. Um... um Eric, you are a very good person. There are very few people like you. I think what happens is something I have to learn about as well, is that um, it comes a point where you realize that you cannot 
take it personal, I think. Right, I think that right. It boils down to that you're just going to have to decide if you want to do the business side right. or you want to make this part of your right. lifestyle. Right. Uh, like that and that, and, and that's the difficult part. That's hard yeah. to separate at times because you form a relationship with each student, right? And it's not just that they're in there for a couple months. Some of these people have been in your gym for years and, and then they, they bounce. And, but it's not only that. I don't think these people, the people listening, the people that come and go, and and this is and, and anyone who's around you knows this, but they don't realize uh, the passion and drive that you have. It boils down that to that we have, yeah, that both of us There's have. There's a passion, yeah. and with that passion, because it's so personal and so close to home, yeah. that what happens is you can't help but envelop people into your circle, yeah. into yourself. Yeah. And and at the end of the day, my my only. Uh, advice on that if I had to give some to myself and to you and to people like ourselves that struggle with uh, uh, liking people trusting people and, right. and giving of yourself to people is that it has to come a point where you have they, you have to either develop a system that gives an earning system that they have right. to earn that trust right. um, and that even that's hard because yeah. um, even the best uh, jujitsu instructors and masters go through it you know, right, from, right, from right. the top to the bottom right right or you're just going to have to get to a point where you're going to be like, uh, uh, not to say negatively in the names, but the top professional people that I can think of is like a Tiger Sherman. Right. You know, like I, you walk in and you're just a bag of money or right. you just look at it as a number. Right. You got to, we're going to have to learn to either, it's hard to find that balance. We're either yeah. going to have to learn to disconnect. Right. Um, and I had to learn that actually the hard way myself. Right. right. Or to say, all right, you guys come to this class and not this one. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. This is for people who you just want to come. They don't care. They come right. late. They wear their gear a certain way. Right. They don't see it. And you try to teach them, but they just want to throw a kick and a punch and leave. Or they right. just want to roll and sweat and leave. It's a gym. Yeah. Now we're going to talk about gym mentality versus dojo mentality, too. There is also the gym mentality, which is like no emotional connection except for right. the endorphins and the kick and the what yeah, you want to get out of it. For sure. It's a lot more self-motivated. Sure. Uh, yeah. And then there's a the classical dojo, which yes. is a place of the way. Right. It, it was a lifestyle. And it's it, again, it's hard. Unless you're going to teach it a certain way, I think. And I, we get into the whole uh, jujitsu uh there's a whole whole other area we could talk about with honor and the discipline that's inside the discipline. There's yeah. a difference between dojo versus, and I'd love to do a podcast on dojo versus gym. Yeah. Um, where it talks about you come in and you show respect, right. honor, discipline, right. courtesy, loyalty right. is part of the training. Right. So if I had to give an answer, it's two answers, two, 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 two part answer. Part one is disassociate yourself uh, from, the, from the students. Right. And, or number two is disassociate from the gym mentality and make it a dojo. Right. Now, I think the future of jiu-jitsu personally is going to have to be from a gym mentality to dojo. What, what does that mean? If you're an MMA person, you're in a gym mentality. If you're a jiu-jitsu person, you should be a dojo mentality. Right. That's what I think. If I were to move forward with it, that's the direction I would go. Right. Moving forward with Find some school. sort of hybrid. Yeah, or not a hybrid. I think Tiger Schumann also given him... Now I'm going to give him the props. Right. I, he found a way to keep the dojo-esque and the gym-esque together. Balance. Right. He it's managed business. to make it work somehow. He does, <laughs> and, and get money from and it. And he's a billionaire, right? So but that's sure. the point. I think at the end of the day, you're not going to be able to love all your students. No, They're not no. all going to yeah. love you. Even gonna though gonna I do. Loyal. I do love all my students. I know. Past, that, present, and future. No, that's, <laughs> that's something I could definitely vouch for you. I, yeah. Since I've been hanging out with you closely lately... I've always I've known, we known each other for a while, but lately we've been I've been really known, close, get, yeah. really close, and getting yeah. to know you as a person. Yeah, uh, I know that I see that that I see that you don't ever you love your students, you love your friends, you don't give up even if they give up. Yeah, there's a that's a that's a that's a great thing to be said about you. Yeah, uh, it's, but it's also in the business aspect. It's, it's an a, unfortunate. It's, it's a bad bad, it's a bad way. Yeah. yeah, I'm in a bad way. <laughs> see, yeah. you got so many good things in jujitsu that yeah. you got to have something off. Yeah. You know, and that's all right. And I think at the end of the day, that's what you have to learn to do because there are some people that they don't don't deserve. To get that, to get yeah, and there's a lot that do. There's some people that we train here, like I can uh, I can name that deserve that. You know what I mean? Your students have been with you, like the the, the Greek this brothers, uh, right? The Alex Rupiners, Nick, yeah. Uh, uh, Alex uh, uh, right. O'Brien, the Irish uh, You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Give a shout out to uh, Robert Ramos, and these are the old guys, man Rob, right? Old man Rob. These <laughs> are the guys who I think they deserve your heart, and 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 to me personally, yeah. Uh, I hope I didn't forget anybody. Did I forget anybody? Oh, and there's um uh, uh, Dylan. And, yeah, and, Dylan. And, and if I forgot anybody, please. Yeah, just, my daughter Camille. Yeah, of course, Camille. And, <laughs> she and, has no choice. <laughs> there you go. And then we got the group I came in with. Yeah. We bond them in together. So my point yeah. is that these people do deserve your loyalty. Yeah. And we got to remember who deserves and who doesn't. And you got some some 
students that are a little touched in the head or some right. people that are come and go. Right, right, right. You have to understand the differences and I think that at the end of the day we're just going to have to say, well, you know, I'm going to give you what you give, what you put in is what you get back. Right, right, right. And I think that's a good thing to say and as I'm learning, I'm still learning the business. Yeah, yeah, for but, sure. Um, I don't, and, and we got to draw away from that creonca concept yeah. in that way because yeah, the, the, I think the Creonte thing is from the past. It's not something. It's kind of something I wanna I wanna push away and have. I want a new era. I want something no, but newer. I personally like the I know you like. I don't I think know, and, so and, much Creonte because that's a. Do you remember the Gracies were the ones that started it? Right. They were family members. Yeah, yeah. So and, they, and, and it's they, family and, with family. With yeah, family. the bloodline love right. and it's like you hang out with your cousin. You can yeah. hang out with your cousin and yeah. friends. Yeah. You're gonna treat him like a friend, but at the end of the night, he's still family. For it's sure. a little something gonna be a little For different. Sure, yeah. So imagine now the Gracies bringing that into yeah. martial arts. So right. that's I think. The, the the birth of the the, the field and, and that might that company. might be the difficult thing for for a lot of schools to try to get over is trying to get you know trying to have loyal students that's, you'll, that's you'll be surprised and that's why it gets into I'm gonna have to say like those not all but some type of those schools that give the rack belts at ten years old yeah I'm not hating on them I think there's got to be a level of balance. Yeah. But like they got to the point where it's a glorified daycare center in yeah, some of these places. And true. they just say, you know what? At the end, and you see these instructors, they just don't really care. You just number. Yeah, yeah. But I don't blame them either because yeah. you do you keep the ones that we probably lost. Right. They found a way to keep them. And right. what do they do? They just come in at the end of the day, oh, get yeah. in, bow, boom, run around. Yeah. And they, Hell, some of those students have grown up in those gyms. Yeah. And so from, from is, child to adult. Exactly, and there's something to say for that. Yeah. So I, I they, they found they found a way to make they it found work. a way to say to hell with them. I'm not taking yeah. them home with me at the end of the night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't, they, you know what I'm saying? They, but there's no, there's no person. They don't have the passion that we have. Right, it's not. I, I'm not saying that they're not passionate. Yeah. I'm saying that it's a different level. Right. The, the type of passion I'm talking about is the same. The differences between the passion you have for your wife. And uh, versus the passion you have for your mother yeah. or father, even or cousin, there yeah. are different types of love right. and passions uh, as to how you like. Somebody. Although there are some schools, there's a great karate school on Steinway. It was uh, Shorojuku Karate. Uh, they have had the same students, and I'm talking. I think there's been there's even some students that were raised as children got married and put their kids into the gym and then their kids got raised in there. I'm willing to bet though is that they keep a level of distance though. I'm willing it's to insane, bet that it's, but it's like family. The, and that school, bro, if you go in that gym and, and one of my one of my uh, yeah uh, one of my daughter's best friends, Eva Josephine, who's an amazing, amazing karate world champion and she's just she's been all over the world hmm. and she's she was she started there a little my daughter trained at that gym and and i had the experience to see some of these kids and, and some of the instructors there started there as children we and to talk to them and you know, and and that guy sensei kai he is he's been teaching at that at that location Whatever. for 50 years it's probably. It's funny because I was getting something like that in my little uh, mom and papa shop. Right. You know, and, and, and I get that too. You get to know the But he, he found him. He, he put his finger on that pulse and managed to keep it keep it straight for, for, for over 50 years. And he has, I think he has more than one location. But that that's something that jujitsu should strive for is to have that kind of but aspect. That's a dojo. Ah, see? There's, there's the dojo versus gym. There you go. Right? That's a dojo. I, I had to think about it for a minute. Yeah. I looked at the gi over there and it right. hit me. Boom. I was like, you said it, that it's a dojo. Yeah. Now, that dojo mentality comes, they figure out how to make it family, loyalty, yeah. uh, values, living right. values, training values, right. uh, family values, uh, along with business. People will appreciate what they're paying for yeah. because there's, there's a spirituality. And imagine that, you start as a child. And here's the key, here's yeah. the key. Here it is. Here's what it is, yeah. what is the difference? Spirituality. Right. I think if you ask me what it is, I think the difference between a gym and a dojo is that a dojo has spirit, spirituality, right. Right. it has a soul. Right. Um, that's what's missing. Now we can get into like what's missing in jiu-jitsu. I think that's what's missing in jiu-jitsu. Could be. Um, Could be, the, absolutely. It, because, you know, uh, uh, you, you know, you can have a dojo, keep the family element, keep the spirituality, yeah. the courtesy, the discipline, the honor, the respect, uh, the courtesy, especially courtesy. I think hugely what's missing in jiu-jitsu uh, which was taken out because of World War II. The, mm -hmm. the Gracie families didn't really bring it in because they didn't want to get involved with the whole Japan went to right. war and they didn't want to be on. They didn't want to deal with that. They couldn't right. mess around and right. it was a bad time. And right. that's some, what I picked up from that era. And they didn't. Why I didn't go into the Gracie family and right. then into Jiu Jitsu from there? Right. But they're trying to bring it back in in the last decade. Is that 
that that that was why because it is but but i think that that's what's missing hicks and Connor started it right first i in my opinion with the yoga and the boot and the samurai right. uh, spirit the spiritual side of it yeah and right. they bow he bows in his dojo the yeah. japanese bow was maybe because yeah. all his trips to japan i don't know if he did it before then i, I would be lying if right he, i don't know right but i think that's what's missing i go to a lot of jiu-jitsu gyms today and it's funny because even the, the, the tournament we just went to pride last weekend yeah I was watching, and I don't see people bowing. I don't see the respect to the instructors, to right. the parents, to the dojo, to the mate. It's very different. It's, it's very, very loose. Different. And we had a personal experience with that yeah. as well, you know. And, it, and I think that what I what that wakes me up to today is because I was getting into the same mentality. Where I was right. letting go the, the, the respect of the same Right. Right. But I, I had a talk with my friend about it while I was at the tournament, and we had a whole discussion right as well. Right. Uh, shout out to Mike Malero. Right. Uh, we were saying that what's missing Kyoto black belt. Yes, an awesome guy. Yeah, uh, uh, we 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 had a discussion. We were saying what's missing is that respect, and I agree. I yeah. have to agree. And I was I stopped. I was on that. Mm -hmm. That was like my uh, political. It was a movement I was in for a while. Yeah, yeah. Then I stopped it. I got into MMA. I got into. But you know, I'm honestly got to tell you, you ha you have it. Right. You have it. It's in there. There are schools that do have it, but you we forget it. And I think that we need to bring that back. Right. I, I, you know, you know how I do sure, your no, class structure. I, you know me. No, for I, sure. I, 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 my you make sure school. you make sure people call me professor. Yeah, and, 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 and that was order. never that was never an issue for me. But now, now, now it's becoming yeah. because we need it though. Yeah, not for nothing. We desperately need it. Yeah. Not this school. I'm not talking about general specific. This yeah. one, I'm talking about jujitsu. Yeah, in general. the community of jujitsu needs that respect to right. instructor or right. his professor or yeah. even sensei. Call him sensei. If you're gonna yeah. call the names in Japanese, kata kata, for example, right, right. we use. Names in Japanese, right. it's not bad. So you sensei, some people yeah. have an issue with that it's Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Right. Personally, I, you know, I think it should be whatever. But as long as you use something, because you right. can say in English, instructor, coach. Right. You, if you want to do English, it's coach. You want to do Portuguese, professor is not a professor, a PhD, yeah. but instructor. Just how right. you say teacher in Portuguese. Right. Uh, sensei in Japanese, sifu in Chinese. Every style has their address system. Right. Their greeting, their etiquette. It's called right. dojo regi saho. Yeah. It's dojo etiquette. And right. I think that is what's missing today. Right, right. People beat each other and they, you know, they, they, they express themselves like right. a, a maybe, certain way. Maybe that's why it's so easy to jump from ship to ship. Maybe that's That's why. exactly why it is. Yeah. Because they, they don't, how, how can they, un, how, if we don't teach it the value. Doesn't, it doesn't feel bad for you to just it's, cut There's that. no spiritual connection. Yeah, there's exactly. There's no emotional spiritual connection. Right. If you put the spiritual connection back in, oh, sensei, right. respect to each other right. in class, bow, right. give a hand, wake yeah. up, bow before yeah. the techniques. About yeah. after the technique, yeah. you know, Jiu Jitsu used to have it even back in the old days a little bit. Yeah. It, mod it, it fluctuates depending right. on school to school. Yeah, for sure. But you used to bow from your seiza, uh, a kneeling position, bow. Right. Then they added the modern uh, slap and bump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. it still did. The old days, you would be the Japanese bow and then slap and bump. It's like right. a kind of fusion, right. which is awesome. I think that's okay too. That's very awesome concept. Right. The thing is, that it's not there at all anymore. Yeah, People yeah. just, because it, I guess maybe the evolution of MMA in gyms, but right. it's all the fighters used to just, and people flocking to want to learn how to the UFC fight, and right. they go to gyms, and they're learning, and then they separate the styles, and they broke them up, and they, they do one crowd. But I, I definitely think that if jiu-jitsu, the future of jiu-jitsu still should be keeping the respect and the bond, the courtesy. I definitely feel that way. Right. About Not just because I'm a traditional Keeping that artist. spiritual side alive. You have to, man. Right. I've, I've spoken to many people, uh, friends, girlfriends, exes, uh, uh, cousins, family, good people, instructors, that you said we had great conversation where we actually said, wow, like what the beauty and the difference is right. like, like and there's also a level of trust. There's there's also a level of oh, people get when they get jobs in the future. They, they what it, why we're respected when we go to job interviews and we say we're martial artists. What right. do you think it is that they're looking at that they right. respect? Not that you can kick ass. Yeah. They say this person has character. This right, person right. has respect. This yeah. person has uh, trustworthy. He's right. loyal. Companies want to hire people that understand loyalty. Right on. You get what yeah, I'm saying? Absolutely. So it's it's to me. I see the value in loyalty. I see the value in, the the value in structure like right. you need to understand that like, you shouldn't walk up to instructor and ask them directly a question yes. I come from an old school mentality you got to work your way up the ranks and you, you had a question you asked the next person higher than you right. you didn't go right to the top and those system goals that you ask the next person right. if they don't know it they have to ask the next person and by the time it gets up all the way to the to the master instructor right. he then knows that nobody knows the answer right, 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 you know what I'm saying right. and that's the way it's supposed to be in martial arts you're Absolutely. not supposed to just I know it sounds crazy I know it sounds, and, we're, and I didn't get into political on this, and we're yeah, talking about yeah. how, it just makes me realize how bad we need it even more yeah. when we're talking about 
all these movements and all these uh, political movements and all these uh, uh, left wing people right. that are like so uh, there's this new generation I keep getting political right. that are born with so we used to call it silver spoon in our mouth now they just what is it they just have um, uh, like they deserve to get it uh, uh, they're, they're, they're old and entitlement self entitlement, self -entitlement. entitlement. Okay, yeah, it's so sure. obnoxious how right. much People tell you, I, mean, I think that the martial arts needs that. And yeah. I think like we we, got, like we talked about this last week, mentors, we are mentors. We are right. martial arts. We are father figures to a lot of parents yeah. now. There's a 50% divorce rate in America right, right. now, uh, maybe more, um, where there's never been more of a time where a sensei, uh, a professor is right. needed as yeah. an image, as yeah. a school role model. teachers, school teachers, yeah. everybody. And you see school teachers it get It takes respect. a village to raise a child, right? Exactly. So. And cause you, now you get to see the value and loyalty, right. respect, on a discipline. Right. You should, I think, personally, you said school teachers. I think teachers don't get the respect they should. Not today. at all. And I Not think back all. in the day, underpaid. You get, yeah, you remember it was different back in the fifties and forties when right. you got cracked in the head by a teacher. You didn't right. do something and you helped. Yeah. And same thing with parents. I think it's gotten this, this, this. I, I don't want to get political, but it's gotten so soft. You right. know what I mean? That I think we need more structure. I do. Yeah. I do think we need balance, of course. Right. But we need at least give us balance. I mean, yeah. Don't go so far to the left or so yeah. far to the right. Yeah. Let's find harmony. Let's say, look, so you got to have fun. Structure. A structure. structure. Yeah, you need structure. structure. Without structure, what do we have without structure? Anarchy and right. chaos. Exactly. And so what do we teach? Yeah, pretty much. Controlled chaos. That's, that's what we, we, we absolutely control it. Um, so to end the podcast, um, uh, to get back to the point at hand here, which was loyalty. So ultimately, it's, it's a two-part it's a two-person thing. It's the instructor's job to teach the student how to be loyal. Maybe by using all this structure, the spirituality, it will help that student maybe have enough respect, honor, and discipline to approach that professor and tell him, I've reached as far as I can go with you. Uh, with much respect, I want to go somewhere else. That is proper. And if I could just add one more thing. I yeah. Know we're running out yeah, of yeah, time, yeah. but... You know, it can save marriages. Also, it can save so many different. It can restructure our society yeah. again, to, so that because we have a mentality. When I was a kid, when I was younger, and my parents were younger, right. our four parents were younger. Yeah, it was like you work things out. You stuck together right. and worked it out. And right. that that can go religiously. That can go spiritually. That can go philosophically. That can go politically. It can go any direction. Everything. I think that we need to stop being walking away from our issues and giving yeah. up on stuff and work and uh, yeah, work. Face. The key word face is work. Face yeah. it. Talk it up. We need to work out. We need to work yeah. harder. We need to work through it. Communicate. Yeah, communicate. communication is key. And work. Deal yeah. with. It. Like yeah. like. And I think yeah. people don't want that. People walk in and they they don't like something. They leave. Right. There's that loyalty thing. They right. they don't like something. They like. Well, I don't have to. Yeah. Well, who I'm are paying you? you. I'm paying. Um, yeah, yeah, I think that's what we lost control. Right. I think that's what we're hurting. Yeah. It's just been more. Nice and, to have. And yeah, martial arts should should be more than just a, a service, right? It should be. It, it should, should, should be, be more than just like a, a gym membership. It should be something because martial arts, whether you like it or not, right? It changes people's lives, it does. right? It does. When I have Alex in here, he'll tell you how it changed his life. When I have Dylan in here, he'll tell you how it changed his life. Every student that we're going to have on this podcast will immediately tell you how mm -hmm. it has changed their life or how they feel it's already started to change their lives. So guys, I hope you were informed in this one. This one was a little more, a little serious, less jokey, but we wanted to cover that because loyalty is something that's uh, very important in martial arts and in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Um, if you have any questions, comments, topics, guys, uh, go down there, type it in. And yeah, go on our Facebook, go on yeah, our Instagram, Instagram, go on anything. Just come, join us, please. And yeah. guys, happy holidays in case we don't get to yeah, say it. Merry and, Christmas, and, you know, happy Christmas. Whatever it is, Queen New Year's, all, all that. We'll get <laughs> <laughs> but we, 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 we see you on the mat. We hope we see you guys on the mat. Yeah, please, guys. So uh, shout to the Nog, and we're, uh, we're logging off here. What's Take it easy.